this guitar lesson, we're gonna work on some Texas swing style rhythm. I'll show you some jazzy chord shapes and we'll also talk about the strumming techniques. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to play through that practice progression that I just played a sample of. So this practice progression is actually something that we're gonna borrow from the song called Two Step Down to Texas by Jack Ingram, Miranda Lambert, and John Randall. We're not going to learn this song note for note or anything, but we're basically just using it to study these jazzy chord shapes and piece together a really nice progression that we can loop over and over again to use for practicing this uh, Texas swing style rhythm. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Pull up tablature on the screen and I'm going to start breaking this down for you. So here's the first line of the tablature for this progression. And right now I'm going to show you the very first chord shape that you need. This is the G6 chord, and this is probably the most important chord in this progression we're about to learn. So this is the G6 chord, and then once we learn this chord, we're going to practice this Texas swing style strumming using this G6 chord. And then after we work on the strumming a little bit, uh, then we'll learn the rest of the chord shapes. So you can play through this entire progression. All right, so the very first chord we need here is the G6 chord. Notice that all four fingers of my fretting hand are pressing something down here. I got my middle finger on the bass note. Right there, that, that G note. Uh, that's the middle finger, third fret, sixth string, and then pointer finger goes on the fourth string, second fret. So that's the pointer. And then your pinky and ring, ring fingers right there, they're kind of flipped, um, what you would normally think. It's a little awkward. Your pinky will go on the third string, and then your uh, ring finger will go on the second string, right there. So just get comfortable with this chord right now. Um, get used to playing it. And then one really important thing, once you get this uh, fingering shape down, uh, one really important thing is that you only want those four notes ringing out, and then we're gonna mute the fifth string, and then we'll mute the high E string as well. See that? See on that chord chart, uh, the little X's above the, uh, the fifth and the the first strings right there. Those X's mean we're going to mute that string instead of letting them ring out open. So at the end of the day, you'll be able to strum down across all six strings, but you'll only have those four notes that you're pressing down with your fretting hand uh, ringing out. And that's really important for all the other chords we're going to play in this arrangement because we're kind of doing this type of stuff here where you're going to be strumming across all the strings, but you only want a few of those notes actually ringing out. So form this G6 chord right here. And here's the strumming pattern that we'll be using for uh, most of this arrangement. It goes down, mute, down, mute. It's just four down strokes. Down, mute, down, mute over and over. And if you're not familiar with the muting part, you know, how to do that, it's real simple. Just form that G6 chord for the first down strum. And then for the muted down strum, all you got to do with your fretting hand is just lift up your fingers a little bit. So they're still laying across the strings right in position to play that chord, but they're not actually pressing the notes down. So you just kind of watch my fretting hand here. You know, my fretting hand kind of bounces off the uh, strings a little bit, off the fretboard. So it presses it down, lift up a little bit. Press down, lift up. So just practice that a little bit if you're not familiar with it. You can put a little emphasis on that muted down strum as well.
So now we got a feel for this Texas swing style strumming pattern. Um, what we're going to do for the rest of this lesson, basically, is I'm going to show you the rest of the chord shapes that you need to know to uh, play through this progression. So basically, we're going to be doing that same type of strumming pattern over a bunch of different chord shapes. So let's check this out with the tablature. First measure, we played the G6 chord. Second measure, we're going to play this new chord right here. ringing out. We're going to mute the surrounding strings. See the X marks in the, uh, the uh, chord chart there? Those X marks saying that we're going to mute all the surrounding strings. We'll just let those three notes ring out. So keep that in mind as we're working through uh, all these chord charts. So that's the chord shape in the second measure. And I'm not going to give a name to each of these chords just because there's a lot of music theory that gets into this and uh, I don't want to make it too complicated. Basically, just going to show you the chord shapes. And we're going to reuse a lot of the same chord shapes, but just move them around a little bit. And I call a lot of these uh, types of chords, I call them passing chords because they help you kind of move from one main chord to the next in a melodic way. So here we go. Back to this tablature. Um, we got the first measure, second measure. Here's the third measure, chord shape. It's basically a C major chord. See that? Pointer, ring, pinky. Muting the surrounding strings. And then fourth measure, chord shape, is this one. So the chord shape in the fourth measure um, how I think about getting to that chord shape, I start with the C major chord that we just played in the third measure. Remember this one? And then to get to the fourth measure chord shape, all you got to do is just put your middle finger down on the fourth fret, fifth string. So the middle finger goes right there. And your ring and pinky, those stay where they were. So. And uh, you notice that your pointer finger is going to be kind of floating out there it's kind of uncomfortable leaving that pointer finger right there. So just for stability, a lot of times I put my pointer finger down uh, behind the ring finger. My pointer finger will go on the fourth string. So the pointer finger is not making anything ring out, but it's just pressing there for stability. And that's the fourth measure chord. So. That's kind of the melodic line that we're going for in this uh, first line of the tablature. So let me play through this using that Texas swing style strumming pattern uh, right here, measures one through four, so you can hear it. One, two, three, four. When you're ready, let's move on to the next line of the tablature. We got some new chord shapes. We got measures five through eight. Let me just play through it so you can hear it. Change up the strumming a little bit at the end of this line, but I'll show that to you here in one second. Let's focus on the chord shapes. So measure five, we're doing a G chord on that first down strum. And you'll notice that this is kind of an F chord shape, you know? There's the F chord right there, but we're just moving it up to play the G chord here in this location, so. And uh, I mute that, that sixth string the uh, my ring finger, my fretting hand, kind of just sits on that that uh, sixth string and mutes it. So that's the first chord that you need in that fifth measure, right there. 
Once you get that down, here's a, another chord in the fifth measure. There's actually two chords to learn in that fifth, fifth measure. So here's this chord. Ring finger, pointer, pinky, ring, pointer, pinky. And mute the surrounding strings. And I'll let you figure out how to mute all these strings. Same concept though for all this basically. You just gotta play around with it. Most of it involves just laying your fingers, fingers a little flatter uh, when you're forming the chord, so it'll mute everything. All right, so that is the uh, that chord shape right there. When you got that down, let's check out measure six. Measure six, you got this chord shape here, middle. Pointer, ring finger, pinky's not pressing anything. It's just middle, pointer, ring. And then mute the surrounding strings. So then, once you get that down, um, there's one more chord in measure six. See that? But all you gotta do to play that chord is just take this exact same shape and then just move everything down one fret. All right, so uh, up to this point, measures five and six, we got. And then measure seven, when you're ready, uh, measure seven, we'll get back to this G6 chord. Remember this one that we started the progression with? So that's the first down strum right there. And in measure seven, we're gonna change up the strumming a little bit to where we do down, mute, mute, down, a little dun, dun. We got two new chord shapes. Um, these aren't that bad there. About halfway through measure seven. We got this chord there. And this is kind of a C7 chord. You, know, you normally play a C7 open chord like this, but we're using a slightly different fingering and focusing on the thicker three strings of that C7. So middle, pointer, ring finger, Pinky isn't pressing anything. So that's that chord. And then, see, I kind of wrap my uh, thumb around to mute that low E string on this a little bit. But you can mute it how you want. You can mute it with your uh, tip, your pointer finger if you want to, that low E string. So anyways, um, that's that C7 chord right there. But then you'll see right after it, we're gonna use that same chord shape, just move it up one fret. So C7, move that same shape up one fret, and that'll get you all measure seven there. And then measure eight. Measure eight is actually that same exact seven chord shape that we just used in measure seven, remember? So measure eight, we'll just move it up one more fret, the strumming for measure eight goes down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. So measure seven and eight, let's check out the strumming uh, real quick. You got the chord shapes down, but here, listen to measure seven and eight. time. Once more. All right, if you're ready, let's play through this entire line, measures five through eight, so you can practice with me if you want to. So here we go. One, Two, three, four. So now let's practice everything we learned up to this point. We got measures one through eight. Uh, take a listen here. 
One, two, three, four. That right there is basically the instrumental intro on guitar for the song Two Step Down to Texas. And if you're listening to the song Two Step Down to Texas, uh, all you got to do, if you want to try to play along with that, uh, just put your capo on the second fret, and you can play the same progression basically, and that'll get you through that little instrumental intro. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to work through the rest of the uh, progression, the rest of this tablature here. And what we're starting right now in measure nine, um, this is actually the main progression that we're going to repeat over and over again. And this is the main progression that repeats over and over in Two Step Down to Texas. So measure nine, um, let's check this out. We got measures nine through 12 on the screen. Let me play through it for you so you can hear it. Okay. 